I'm Caitlin Bristow. Your session is now starting. Welcome to the show. Hey everybody, welcome to Grape Therapy. Coming to you from Ireland, from Dublin, Dublin. We talk about Jess. We talk about Katie. We talk about what's going on in his life. Is he dating now? What is he looking for? Would he be the bachelor? There's so many things. Just always a great chat with a fellow Canadian, Blake Moynes. How are you? What's new? I'm good. Uh lot i mean lots is new there's always new things on the docket but uh it's honestly just mostly wildlife related stuff so nothing yeah. nothing outside of that realm too much to be honest well tell me about in that realm i'm interested i don't only care about you for your bachelor shit i want to hear about what's going on in your real life well i leave in three days i go to the amazon for about a month and i'm like deep in the amazon Which over one? christmas originally i'm supposed to be a project with this wildlife rescue center out there that takes in animals that have been exploited in the pet trade so exotic animals you mm. can think of, mm. tigers, monkeys, anything. And essentially, they bring them into the sanctuary to then go through the rewilding process to then be able to re-release them into the wild and have success with it. The issue is, is that now a fire is encroaching and wiping out the Amazon in and around the sanctuary. So animals are all coming in right now, burnt, oh, needing to go through care. So essentially, the project shifted, and we're probably going to need to be focusing on the fire aspect and not so much the pet trade stuff. But yeah, that's the project. That's what we'll be doing over December, and then. So what do you do when you go in there and like there's fires? Like, what do you got to put on your firefighter outfit and like go save some animals? Like, I honest, to be honest, I don't really know what we're what we're really getting into. I have three days to plan. This just happened, and this we just got noticed. So now it's like a whole shift in like what the the intent and the initiative is supposed to be. So I'll know more about that soon. What is the craziest thing you've ever done in that world? Like, what are you, what do you look back on and go, holy shit, I can't believe I did that. I honestly, in terms of like difficult uh, scenario would be the, the wildlife ranger training I did to get certified as a wildlife ranger. I think just the combination of one, like the actual army training that goes into it. And then two being exposed to those elements that are insane. And then all the dangerous wildlife as well. So you have both, kind of coming into the same world, both people that want to kill you essentially and wildlife that want to kill you. So going through that training for about five weeks was probably the most intense. Was it I five would weeks? Say. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. I like to think I'm tough or I don't know. I feel like I like to think I could like rough it in the woods or like your girl likes camping. I don't know. But when you talk about like those situations, I feel like I'd be such a baby, even though I will say, <laughs> I think I talked to you about this on DMs yeah. that I swam with sharks in Hawaii that was the craziest thing I've ever done because there was no like cage and I just trusted these random like Hawaiian local men, which they were missing fingers and they were like, yeah, just jump in and don't act scared. And I was like, okay. And I just like jumped in and on the inside was having a panic attack and like was just face to face with all these sharks. So I feel like you'd be proud of me for that. I would, I would, depending on the species, if they're nurse sharks, I'd kind of because eh, they're just not overly dangerous. But you know what? Shark's still a shark. So you wouldn't know the difference. Well, maybe right? you're not. Just a shark. <laughs> it, was, so, it was a killer shark that was going to eat me. No, right, it was like, that's, that's how you sell it right there. <laughs> I actually don't know what kind of sharks are, but that's a good question. I didn't ask enough questions. I just kind of was like, well, if you're born to get shot, you won't get hung. So if I'm going to get eaten by a shark, that's how she goes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you know what? It's just once you get more of those under your belt, then it become you get more comfortable with it. But yeah, to dive in the sharks right away is a bit of a jump. Can you believe? <laughs> can you believe that you're back on off the vine to talk to me about your experience on Bachelor in Paradise? Like, did you ever think you were gonna do no. Bachelor in Paradise no. after being like Claire, Tasha, Katie? You sound like Caitlin Bristow going through them all. I didn't. I didn't think I would. I think once you take enough of a break there's kind of like an itch to like it, it can be Literally. it can be it can be fun and then with everyone selling me that's been through both experiences being like you're not just going to do bachelorette like the fun one is paradise like go at least go see what it's about i mean there was a lot of other convincing and other things that had to line up for it to happen but uh, i don't regret it it was a lot of fun it was definitely a lot of fun and i could see why people have success there it's much easier to have success there than the other shows no question yeah, you, it's way much more quality time and yeah. like you get to know somebody. They're not always taking them away from you and making you feel like it's like this prize on a pedestal. You're like actually yes, get to, yes, getting to know yeah. someone. And your yeah. and your like walls are down because you're like, look, I'm shitting my pants um from this food here and like sweating <laughs> and like having issues. I feel like you just get real like right off the bat. Yeah, no, you know what? I was surprised at the amount of time you could spend. Yeah. And like you can it's not it's not always just serious conversations. You can joke around like it's 
that you could have all of the surface level stuff. It's not just jumping to the important things because you only have X amount of time. So it is more realistic, call it in a sense. And so I appreciated that, that aspect to it for sure. Yeah, totally. And I think by now we've all seen on Paradise a couple of weeks ago when Katie walked down on the beach, obviously have to talk about that. You two, mm-hmm. that was the first time you both had said words to each other in two years. Now, looking back, because hindsight is always twenty twenty, mm-hmm. how were you feeling in that moment? Because like it in shit storms like that, I black out. And so I'm like, now that you can remove yourself and look back on it, what were you actually feeling in that moment? I, I define it as, as angst. I wasn't nervous. I was just anxious because I didn't know what was going to come out of her mouth. When you've spent that much time apart, you really don't like, you don't remember where it necessarily left off. You don't know what she's thinking or feeling after those two years. I remember she was very apologetic in the moment and to all the things that she had sent me where I didn't respond and everything, but I don't know what had changed in that time frame. So I was just like waiting, like you start, what, is, what are you here to tell me type thing? So I was just anxious and you can't, not knowing she was going to be there. Like I didn't really prepare for what I was going to say. So I just had to speak out of raw emotion and what I felt in that moment. And so it was just very, yeah, it felt better as I talked to her. Cause I could tell she wasn't there to like stir the pot, which, you know, as we know, Katie can do. And so um, she I, she, she's great at that. that. Yeah. So yeah. I was, I was, wasn't sure what she was, what ammo she was coming in with and what she wanted to talk about, but I'm glad that it way left it. Yeah. It was such a healthy, incredible conversation. I, I like found myself rooting for you guys. I was like, maybe you guys should get back together. Like mom and dad spoken like a true divorced child over here. I'm like, get mom and dad back together again. <laughs> there was a lot of that out there actually surprising. Well, I just think, you know, there was a lot of people rooting for us at the time when, you know, we did get engaged and, you know, that I think there's still those people there who are pushing and hoping for that. Was there a part of you that was rooting for that? Because when I watched Katie back in that interview, she got emotional saying when they asked if, if she still loved you. Obviously, you didn't see that because it was in one of her interviews. What did you think watching back? Uh, I mean, I felt for her in that moment, right? Because I understand there's like, there's always some type of feeling or like love that kind of lingers, I think, regardless of if there's an actual potential for reconnecting in a romantic way. I think there's always going to be love for somebody there, right? Like I do have a place for her still. Yeah. Is it enough to have something sparked? No, not for me. Um, but yeah, of course, like you see that and it's like, a, you know, pulls in your heartstrings a little bit. Sure. Yeah. It just made it kind of reiterated that, you know, it was all very much a real thing. And, you know, it wasn't the default and all those things that that played into that narrative on that season. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess that makes sense. Sometimes the best closure is just like giving it some space and then having a healthy conversation and then knowing that you did make the right decision. I feel like I kind of had that recently too, where it was like, there's the anger built up and the, oh, this on Instagram, this on Instagram. Sure. And then actually just having a healthy, mature conversation and being like, hey, we're both just hurting and that's okay. And like, this is the right decision. So let's just like have respect moving forward. I feel like that it just goes such a long way, even for your mental health. It does, right? It's so simple. It, like I try to explain this. It is so simple and the easy route to hate, like to hate them. Find the reasons to get over your ex by hating them. They suck. They're this, they're this, 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 and this. And absolutely, I think there are scenarios in which when you break up with somebody, whether it's cheating or they really stab you in the back or something where it's like, I don't need you in my life anymore, move on. But if it's ended in an okay way and you can salvage those memories and like have a good outlook on that person, there's very few people in life that you are able to connect with experience with love that you can hold close. So like why throw those memories and that person out the window when there's just, you know what I mean? Try to fight to create a healthy space for that person. If you can. Now, if they, yeah, yeah. but like, if for the yeah, most yeah. case, depending you know on I mean? the like situation, then and yes, it's not I a agree. What? Statement, but yes. Let's talk about one of my passions in life, skincare. I've learned so much over the years about my skin and with all of the different products out there, it can be really hard to find acne and anti-aging products that actually work. So why not take the guesswork out of skincare and simplify your skincare routine with Curology? Curology makes personalized prescription skincare products. So Curology treats a variety of skin conditions, including acne, clogged pores, fine lines, dark spots, and rosacea. You just fill out a quiz about your skin, share photos, and after a consultation, your provider will prescribe a personalized formula based on your skin's unique needs. It's so easy. No need to hassle with in-office appointments. It's all online and the products are shipped directly to your door. I am 
all about that convenience life, honey. So now get up to six skincare products free up to a $52 value with free shipping and a no cost consultation with a licensed dermatology provider. When you go to curology.com slash vine, go to curology.com slash vine for this free offer. That's curology.com slash vine. Prescription products are excluded from free product offer. Applies only on your first box. Subject to consultation, new subscribers only. See curology.com for full details. What made you want to go on Paradise in the first place? Is it because you just had heard that people were like, it's so much more chill and it's fun and like you meet someone, there's no pressure at the end to get engaged. Is that kind of like where you were coming from? And did you hope to see Jess when you were there? Was she like on your radar? It was, it was a combination of things. Honestly, it was very similar to the first time that I went on The Bachelorette in the, in the first place. I, I say yes to everything. Look at my the way I live my life right now. I say yes to anything crazy, adventure, new. Something's going to provide me something that can provide growth and something I can get uncomfortable with. Well, this is just another version of The Bachelorette where it's like crazy experience. Never done this before. It'd probably be a cool to look back on. Could meet somebody. Let's just dive in and see what happens here. So that's really the basis of it. Mm-hmm. And then just seeing that it does work. Like there's... It, it was, I hate, like, we always talk about, you know, it does work. We believe in it. But, like, it is a part to the decision making. You do see successful relationships out of it. So that's always a key piece to it, too. Yeah, I think so, too. It's like, I always say there's so many situations in life where you could take 20 couples off the street and try and make it work. Like, maybe one will. It's the same thing on TV. It's just people get so disappointed when those relationships don't work. But I'm like, maybe look in side yourself and why are you so upset about other people's relationships failing like what are what do you need to work on in your life yeah. but I mean I do it too I always root for people on the show to find love I always root for them after I always want to be there for everybody after the show and like try and help because I didn't feel like I had enough help after coming off of the season yeah. so yeah. I always like to be there for others and root for them but okay so how did you feel watching the whole thing play back like where you're at now watching it back are you surprised by anything? Are there things that they didn't show that you wish they did? How are you feeling watching it all play out? I mean, you know, I, I was very much low key this season. Like I, I wasn't really involved in a lot of the, the drama and the, and the shit you want to call it. I really just literally focus on myself in, the, in my relationship. I think I've been through enough that I kind of know how to navigate this in a way to my benefit where I can just try to focus on the relationship if I want to make this successful and not get dragged into the shit. Mm-hmm. Would I change anything? I think maybe I sh- wish I should have caught on to the fact that like Jess wasn't sold on me and I think I maybe shouldn't have waited so long for her to like potentially come around because in that instance I wasted time maybe with somebody that wasn't sure and you don't want anyone that's not sure of you and I think I waited too long for to figure that out. Whereas I potentially could have, you know, tried other relationship stuff, but I also wasn't interested in anyone else romantically on that beach. So aside from when Jen came down. So I don't know. I think everything played out the way it should. Sure, you miss a lot of conversations, as we all know, but the storyline in the the instance of events was all there. Well, I think the main thing I want to know is, did you really make Katie call you daddy? (laughs) Oh, shit. Am I supposed to respond to that shit? Uh, listen, I'll, I'll say this. <laughs> With the truth. No, listen, I'll say this much. I'm definitely of a dominating nature in bed. Now, do those words come out? Maybe drinking a little bit. It's hard to do that sober. I just don't like I don't think it's the word I like. I think it's the, the theme that comes with it, the dominating theme, you know? The word just insinuates that. That's so fair. <laughs> I love the honesty because I think a lot of people will be like, no, I didn't do that. So thank you for being honest. That's Oh, I think it's relatable. It's relatable, right? It is relatable. It Everyone is else is sitting here being like, oh, like that's crazy. It's like, no, no, no. You f- damn well know you've been there. Especially after a few drinks. Yes. So don't put this on me like I'm a weirdo. There's a bunch of you out there. Oh no, I get freaky naughty in the sack after a few drinks. Don't even get there me go. started. There you go. I will say, what's her name? Kylie? Yeah. When Kylie was so upset that you were leaving the beach, I was like, uh, was there a little something flirting going uh, on there or were you guys just really good friends i think that the i gravitate to a few of the girls on that beach in the sense that there were a few really close to jess and so you know when you can just be so close to and make girlfriends really quickly when like you're with one of their best friends and so you can gravitate and tell them anything and be super close with them that's what basically developed with kylie even mercedes there and, and kat where I just felt that there were safe spaces where I could joke around and really just be myself with them. And so we were able to create really great relationships where it just felt natural. So I think like, I don't, I can't speak on her end 
I mean, she obviously threw me off in that conversation because I was like, where do you kind of say, like, what do you mean exactly? So I was confused. I was like, I just got to get out of here. But yeah, it was a, a really healthy relationship built on the show that I don't know could have made things look a certain way for sure. My God, I was like, what's going on? Are we missing a big friendship here or is this flirty? Are you still close with all of them after the show? Yeah, I mean, I have, I think I'm the busiest I've ever been in my life. So we have a, you know, a, a group chat that banters back and forth here and there about some things. And yeah. there's a few of them I keep in touch with more than others. Some came to a gala in San Diego to support me being Braden, Aaron, Sam, Katie was there. Yeah, I saw that. Susie. So yeah. Uh, so yeah. So we, you know, stay in touch for sure. I would, would say not much more than that just because it's like, it's a lot, it's a lot to, you know, be on with everybody, but. Certainly. If this wasn't going to air and you had to answer honestly, who is your favorite person out of everyone in Bachelor Nation? Who is your favorite human out of all of them? Every All that I know, like everyone that I like. Yeah. yeah I mean, I'd have to have personal relationships. So anyone that I've ever met in Bachelor Nation, I mean, I would probably say probably my closest friend would probably be Zach Clark. And then your least favorite. <laughs> I don't. I'm not saying you have to hate them, just your least favorite. <laughs> no, it's really wrong, me, Caitlin. That's really hard to say. That's really just because, like, if I. I'm not going to. You don't have to answer it. No one's pissed me off, really. I know who mine are. I know who my favorites are and my least favorites, and you couldn't pay me to tell you. I'd be very interested to know who that is, though. Okay, moving on before I get myself in trouble. Sure. I wanted to talk about Queen Rachel because I love Rachel so much and she ended up leaving this episode too so yeah. what are your thoughts on her experience like I love a roast I yeah. feel like they people get mean and they go there but mm. I hated what Tanner said but what did you think of her decision to leave do you think it was the right move for her 100% I mean listen we were so close that whole season I think we came in with kind of a a bond. I'd met her outside of the show months before that, or a year, actually a year before we actually ended up going on. But anyway, so I knew she was, but I hadn't really, like, didn't know her very, very well. But when we got down there, I think there was a bond coming and being like, we don't know anybody here. We've been out of this for a little bit. And so we were able to just bounce. Like, if she, if I needed, like, advice, I would run to her. Like, honest advice. And it was the same thing mm -hmm. the other way around. And so I would give her insight on what I thought about certain guys or, like, how she should manage things or whatever. And yeah, like, well, the whole time I just was like, I don't think yeah, that's it, Rachel. And she's like, really? Oh my God, I just don't think. And that continued to happen throughout. And I'm, I was just happy that she didn't stick around to try and figure, there's no one else there and there's no one truly for her there, I don't believe. Do I think she could have had some fun with Brayden? Sure, but I don't think it would have been serious. It was would have been fun for her, but I don't think she would have left in a serious relationship. So I think it was time to, for her to, to pull the trigger. Yeah, that's fair enough. I just, I freaking love her. Okay, maybe the season of giving to others, but all my hair is giving is dryness and frizz. And I'm in New York right now, super dry, not helping. No thanks. So with Living Proof, I am giving my hair what it really needs to thrive this time of year. Now we all know that there is no one size fits all solution regardless of your hair type, texture, or concern, which is why Living Proof's products are uniquely formulated to address the root cause of your hair concern, never to conceal it. So is cold, dry weather affecting your hair? Not sure what your hair needs? Instead of guessing, I start by taking Living Proof's all online hair quiz, which analyzes my specific hair care needs and styling goals, and then uses their first to market technology to help customize the right hair care routine. I just personally love the weightless mask this time of year. Just five minutes, my dull, lifeless hair feels so much softer and so much shinier. Give your hair what it really wants this holiday season with Living Proof. Go to livingproof.com slash vine and use code vine to get 15% off your next purchase. That's livingproof.com slash vine, code vine, livingproof.com slash vine, code vine. Unwrap the first of many presents this season with holidays on the house from DraftKings Casino. Now with hundreds of games, prizes, and promos, DraftKings Casino has everything on your list. And right now, new players who play $5 get $100 instantly in casino credits. So what are you waiting for? Cozy up with all the classics like slots, blackjack, and roulette, or play exclusive games that you'll only find at DraftKings Casino to feel the holiday cheer all season long. Download the DraftKings Casino app now and sign up with promo code VINE and play $5 to get $100 in casino credits. That's promo code VINE only at DraftKings Casino. The crown is yours.
Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. Please play responsibly in partnership with Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races in West Virginia. All games regulated by the West Virginia Lottery in Connecticut. Help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Must be 21 years or over. Physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. One per opted in new customer. Minimum $5 deposit. Max max match $100 in casino credits, which require one-time playthrough within seven days. So see terms at casino.draftkings.com slash players choice restrictions apply. Obviously rumors swirl all the time on like people getting the bachelor, the bachelorette edit. How are you feeling that you're getting the bachelor edit? Would you ever be the bachelor? And please say yes. I like, are you on dating apps right now? Are you dating anyone? Or are you like open to be the bachelor if they asked? So I have recently been on a dating app to at least try conversation because I'm always like in the jungle and like I, so like, I don't meet people. I don't go to bars and stuff so like that's an avenue at least to see aside from like someone DMs or whatever just to see like who's interested in and around my city or wherever I'm traveling in terms of like the whole bachelor thing I have learned through now being in this franchise for a little bit that I've talked to to many leads engaged to one and saying how difficult that process is how terrifying it is. That's a scary thing. It's really, I just don't think it's as easy as what people think. And so cool opportunity wise, you know, when you, when you go back on everything that I just recently said in terms of like cool experience, never done it before, always say yes to crazy adventures. I think that's one though, that being on that pedestal, you have a huge responsibility, not only for yourself, but for everybody else kind of there in yeah. some capacity too. And so there's a lot of thought that we need to go into that and timing. I like, I'm in a new country doing a new project like every month. And so like, what would I be passing up to potentially do that and look like an idiot maybe? Like, But if- what if you met like Jungle Jane, who's like all about the wildlife and you met your like true partner in life all from going on this crazy ass show like it's never been talked about in any in any way and so you know uh, you can float the ideas all the way around but i haven't put any thought until i have an expectation that you know that's even in the realm and right now it doesn't look like that's the case so speculate all you want but uh they still need to go through a whole season of the bachelor and then the bachelorette and then see what kind of ding dong we get out of that season so We'll see what happens, but would you ever go on another reality dating show? I really don't think so. I want to do like Naked and Afraid or like Alone or something where it's like a challenge, you know? Like I want to get naked in the wilderness and prove to myself that, you know. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like you could do Special Forces. That would be a cool one. Yeah, I mean, I think I'd do okay with that. Just again, going through what I've already been through with the the wildlife training or wildlife ranger training and stuff. But yeah, that's a whole other element in terms of like severity so yeah i would do that one too for sure what is your favorite like foundation in the wildlife community to like for people to donate to this is really difficult because i i so i originally started off with these animals behind me for the most part rhinos that's my definitely my favorite and that's where it all started for me but i think now diving into so many different realms and different continents with different animals whether it's like marine life or terrestrial life like there's There's reasons to try and support all of them. My biggest one would probably Big Life Foundation. I spent three weeks in the, without the rangers living in the bush with them, seeing what it takes to protect Kenya and Tanzania and all the wildlife in that area, these big Tusker elephants. And so that is an umbrella that protects lots of animals with that organization. So I'd probably go there, but there's a reason to, to donate to so many more. I try and think of things this way. It wouldn't even just be necessarily like, oh, it's a really tough thing to do and you're going to be the bachelor and take time away. I'm like, imagine building a platform, finding your partner and then having more awareness to these things just from having, you know, more people be aware of you as a human being in this world and things that you're doing. So I feel like that's a plus too. So you could have you know, a more, a bigger platform to share your message to more people. Yeah. Maybe you found a girl that is passionate about the same things. I'm like creating yeah. a narrative in yeah. my head. I'm yeah. like, hey. now I'm like, hashtag like the bachelor. But I, <laughs> what are the top three qualities you'd be looking for in a girl if for, for next, or I don't know if you've met somebody or whatever, but what are your like top three qualities you look for in a girl? So first, yes, I do, do agree that that would be the best case scenario. I would love for someone just to want to be out there doing that shit with me. To be able to show, I do it every, every time I get back from a trip. I'm like, that was a crazy, that was incredible. Or the instances on those trips where I'm like, how am I supposed to tell the story for it to have the same? Like, I wish somebody was here to like experience it with me, right? You want to build life with somebody and memories. That's the way to do it. And I'm right now I'm doing it by myself. So that's annoying. But I would say 
top three shit. I probably have like seven to ten, but I would go with adventurous, easygoing. Yeah. Because if you take life too seriously, we're not going to work. And Mm -hmm. probably honesty, because like you can navigate a lot of challenges and difficulties through telling the truth and like working through the truth. But if you start lying, they're harder to work through, harder to get through. And so honesty is key. We're all looking for that rock. Rocks don't lie. Rocks tell the truth and you work through them, right? So I'd say maybe those things. That's like my number one thing is the honesty. Like sometimes I'm so brutally honest. People don't even know what to do with me. They're like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. You're very Well, it can be a lot, right? It can be, it can be a lot for people for sure. But it's like, it just makes things easy. Well, I mean, you get yourself into some confrontation here and there, but like, at least you're never caught up any shit. You're like, I didn't lie. Yeah, exactly. At least I didn't lie. Like, let's deal with this. Yeah, exactly. It's so hard to lie. Yeah. Lying's difficult. It's so hard to keep up with your lies. If you're going to hurt me, hurt me with the truth. I like that. I'll take that any day over a lie. Yeah. Okay, I have a quick game to play with you. So most likely to Bachelor in Paradise cast. So who's, I mean, this one's probably obvious. I feel like it's going to be Wells, but who is on that beach most likely to make you feel better? Mm, Wells or Rachel? Who would you ask to pick your nose? Who would you feel that comfortable with that you would be like, pick my nose? (laughs) Oh, shit. Uh, Probably Peter, honestly. Pete, Pilot Pete, to be honest. (laughs) Okay. He was jokes. He was jokes there. We got along well. Who was most likely, speaking of honesty, who is most likely to lie to your face? Who is most likely to lie to my face? People didn't really f*** with me there. Or, like, I don't think they wanted to. But I would say, oh, I don't want to. Uh, that's difficult. Um, I, 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 I don't think anyone would. I don't think anyone would lie to me. <laughs> well, that's very... Of you. Everyone was so nice to me there. So like, I can't see anyone, you know, maybe Sean, if he wanted to get what he wanted with Jess and he would, you know, maybe snake around there a little bit, but that would be it. But even then I just, there know. we go. You found a loop. Yeah, yeah. Who was the one that made you laugh the most on the beach? Kat, I thought she was really hilarious. Yes. Because like, now I'm calm watching everything unfold. And so I always liked being around her because she was always in the thick of it and her her like antics and her like emotion and she always wore everything on her sleeve so she was just so fun to be around because she was just entertaining so she made me laugh all the time that's why she was my favorite she was my favorite character on that beach no question okay and then what did you do for your glow up because so many people go on tv and i swear when they know they're going on another tv show like every time the bachelorette gets chosen and then she goes to be the bachelorette i'm like whoa the glow up is real. yeah yeah did you glow up for to go on to the beach or what was going on there well combination of things so i, I you probably don't remember but when i did claire Tasha, like i was very in shape for that season but people remember me most for katie's and for katie's mm-hmm. it was through covid where i was just starting my preparation to go on paradise that season or that year so I'd sign my papers, ready to go to Paradise. When Katie was announced as Bachelorette, that's who I wanted to go meet in Paradise. I called them. I said, hey, listen, like, what's the chances of just like going to meet her? That was a girl I wanted to meet. See what happens. If it doesn't work, I'll just keep, go to Paradise another two months. But when it all spiraled, mm-hmm. I had just started working out. I put on like 20 pounds. So I like blew up through COVID and then had no time to like prep to go on Katie's season because I had just started my prep to go on Paradise. So... I think people remember me as like my COVID, like yeah, I took a little time off and like on Katie's season, but for the most part, like I'm in pretty decent shape. <laughs> now coming on to paradise though, yeah. I had recently gotten in shape anyway, just because I was out and like, you know, single, just a typical thing to like, hey, I got to clean myself up here or whatever. So I just started getting into routine. And then when I had an idea that paradise, even a sliver of like 10% that it might happen, I'm like, I'm not going on looking at my worst. So I just ate clean and worked out maybe too much. Okay, but tell me this. Did you still drink Spade and Sparrow's wine? Yes. And uh, so I have um, at my cottage, I went up there. I don't go up there enough. And I have a, a bottle that was hidden in my in my closet underneath my thing. I was looking for alcohol. Because so when you get up there, you don't have options. Like if it's closed, like you don't have options. We're scrambling to find booze. Right. And I remember from like a year and a half ago, you had sent me some. And I, and I had a stash bottle underneath my closet. And so that got us through the yes. night. <laughs> I love it. I always try to tell people, like, even though, like, everyone's always like, don't drink alcohol if you want to get in shape. I'm like, my wine is low sugar. You are fine. Drink the wine. Yes. Moderation. Moderation for sure. Moderation. Exactly. We can't leave without 
a confession because I feel like that's my favorite part of the podcast. So tell me about your confession and how did you shit your pants? That's usually what people tell me. Uh, well, it actually has to do something in that realm, but a little bit different. I was trying to find one that I could actually tell that what that wasn't like over the top. A lot of my stuff's like, a, like a, it's, it's, it would make me look like a freak. So this is, I think is relatable. And let me try to get through this as quick as possible. Imagine this. Okay. I'm like mid twenties, about 20, call it 25 years old. I was in a relationship for two and a half years with somebody that I really, really, really liked. And we're going through the process of meeting once she had a split family. We're going through the process of meeting one or her one side of the family being her dad's side. And at the same time, we were going to a dinner to meet grandparents for Christmas. So there was a table for about 15 people in this really tiny home that their grandparents had. So not only am I just nervous in general to meet everybody and be in my best behavior and whatever, the table in this very small home in the living room with 15 people was like, the bathroom was like a meter away from like the head of the table, okay? Like, so like, it's right there. Mm -hmm. It's right there. And, you know, I'm panicking a little bit, trying to like hold it in and I'm not feeling so hot and like, whatever, it's middle of dinner and it's hot and they're already, there's too many people. I'm sweating a little bit. And I was like, okay, I need to excuse myself to go to the washroom. I understood that there was a washroom downstairs. Okay. But if I opt to go to the basement washroom, then they know I need to take a number two. And I don't want them to know that. I don't need, like, I'm not going to like go down there for them to be like, oh, he needs to go, you know. I don't want that. I'm already nervous. Yeah. yeah. So I go into the washroom that's literally a meter away from the head of the table. I step in there. I realize I can hear everything. They would be able to hear everything. I need to like, first off, be so quick to make it seem like I just took a piss. Okay. I need to like get this out as quick yeah, as possible. Quick. In and out. Well, I do. Okay. Yeah. I flush. I try to flush right away. To make sure there's no smell, no nothing. And it's not, none of it's going down. None at all. <laughs> and I'm like panicking. So like, what the fuck do I do now? Like, there's 15 people. There's probability that someone's going to come in right after me. So I can't leave it in here. And I'm not stepping out and be like, hey, you got to help me with oh, this. No. What did you do? I panicked. I'm starting to sweat. I know that I'm on a time crunch. So I just start hand bombing it out of the toilet into the garbage. <laughs> I didn't know what else to do. It's the garbage? Yeah, because where else am I going to put it? Ah! And so I'm the tub or the sink so you can wash it down. No, no, no. These are these are quality that was not being broken down that way. So I'm putting it into the garbage. I'm him. I'm sweating. Like I don't I don't know what to do. And I've uh, I, remember you're on a time crunch. You don't know what you're supposed to like. What 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 would what would what would you do? This is relatable. I feel like this is something that happens to people. You're in that scenario. Yes. You're on a time crunch. You have nowhere else to put it. You're not going to come out and announce to everybody right then and there. What do you do? I probably would announce it. That's me personally. I would rather announce it than put my hands in my own shit and scoop oh, it out oh. into a. Because then you've got to think about the smell and the bag and walking by the fifteen people and like. Oh no! I didn't take so it out. Many other... I didn't take it out with me through the garbage. I pretended like I I sunk it in the bottom of that garbage. I tied it, packed it, pretended like it never happened. And I just made sure the garbage was full so they see that it had to be taken out right away. And I sealed that shit. Literally. I washed my hands. I came back to the table Literally. sweating, sweating buckets, being like, oh, I hope it doesn't sound there. I'd be a weirdo. If they caught me throwing my shit in there, I'd be even weirder than just telling them that I, what happened. But like I panicked in the moment. Okay, I get it. I get it. I do weird things when I panic, and I'm gonna forgive you for this, but I also just you're the one that likes people to be honest. Just own it. Walk out there and say, I fucking clogged the toilet. Lol. Not, yeah, not to dad. Not to dad and the grandparents and everyone at Christmas dinner for the first time within an hour of being there. It's just not happening. It's not happening. Who went in next? Who went in next and then had to drop a deuce and then they're fucked too? I don't know. I wasn't thinking about that. All I know is, is that I've never been called on it. They've never said anything. So my plan clearly worked and was the right way to go because I got out of there scot-free. Okay. I hope she is still around and I hope she listens to Off the Vine podcast. I saw her. I saw her actually a few weeks ago my gala. That, yeah. So yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe she does. The thing is, you know, I think the hand bombing part would freak people out. But you got to remember, like, I live in the woods and like, you know, I'm shitting on leaves and, you know, wiping with leaves That's and stuff. True. So like that whole thing to me, it's whatever. Like I pick up my dog shit. If it, you know what I mean? Like it's, it is what it is. That's true. Okay. It was just another Tuesday for you. You're just exactly. hand bombing shit like, <laughs> like you always do. <laughs> Listen, it's a scenario that I feel like someone else can relate to. I felt like it was. I, I'm sure many Off the Vine listeners can say that they've done the same. I've I've had a few confessions where people do some weird stuff with, when they 
clog a toilet. So you're not alone. Thank you for coming on the podcast. It's a blessing to see you on our TV screens. I'm, I'm going to miss you now. And I felt like I got a little slice of Canada each time you said a boat and <laughs> Blake for Bachelor. Thank you for coming on Off the Vine. Thank you for having me. That was really fun. Appreciate it. I'm Caitlin Bristow. Your session is now ending. And if I'm being honest, I wouldn't mind a rating and review.